That's a good word right there. Yeah. Now, let me go in. 3 John 2. All right, 3 John 2. Now, God began to reveal to me, first of all, we need to know what the will of God, uh, that it is the will of God for us to prosper. Uh, one very powerful scripture that God has been given to me, and I've just been on it and on it, is, is in Deuteronomy 8 and 18, it says, It is the Lord thy God that gives you power to create wealth. wealth. Come on. Each and every one of you, he has put his creativity, he has put his fingerprint of creativity on the inside of you. And each and every one of us, I'm not going to find wealth, I'm going to create wealth. Come on, that's mm. right. Now the thing is, is each and every one of us has the capacity to create wealth. And I'm not going to go into that real deep, I may at a later time. Wealth, we're chasing after money rather than wealth. Mm. We always associate wealth with money. But all wealth is not money. Because one of the most powerful things that you can have in wealth is actually resources and influence. I would rather have influence than money because influence can take you farther and help you get the money. Because once you have influence with people, it will put you in places like Joseph had influence with favor. But he didn't have the money until later. That's right. That almost rhymed. He had, he had influence and favor, and the money came later. Okay. We're chasing the money rather than wanting to become people of influence. Daniel was a man of favor. He was highly favored of the Lord, not because he had money. So he had the wealth the whole time. Now, what was Joseph's wealth? Joseph's wealth was his gift. And his gift was the ability to interpret dreams. Mm -hmm. So God has invested a gift each, in each and every one of you that has the capacity mm -hmm. to create wealth. Amen. Amen. Now, Amen. what I want to talk to you about, this word, when the Lord began to give this to me, the Holy Spirit began to let me know, and I'm not going to revamp the whole thing. I've got a really good message I didn't bring it with me. It's called the wounded soul. Mm -hmm. The wounded soul. What God began to reveal to me, He said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as or the same degree as your what? So, okay, that means we need to understand what the soul is, right? Mm -hmm. Man is a tripartite being. Body, soul, and what? Spirit. 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 Your spirit is what you connect with to God. Mm -hmm. The spirit of a man is the what? Candle of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The spirit of man is where you get revelation. The spirit of man is how you commune with God. Mm -hmm. The spirit of man is how you worship God. The spirit of man is, your, is God speaks to you through your spirit. Mm -hmm. Now God has also given you a body. So, and, and so the spirit is how you interact with God. Mm -hmm. Now the body is how you interact with the material world around us. God has given you five senses. And through the five senses, you become aware of your surroundings. You become uh, world conscious. Through your spirit, you become God conscious. And through your body, you become world conscious. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. That's when you put on something hot, you feel it. All right? It's body consciousness. Now, through your soul, when God breathed spirit into Adam, when spirit came in contact, when spirit came in contact with Adam's material body, it developed the soul. Man, when God breathed in him, man became a living soul. So the soul is the overlap between your flesh and your spirit. The soul is not spirit and the soul is not flesh, but it's part of both. It is the connector. It's the breach between the two. Okay? So it's the overlap in the two. God breathed in Adam and Adam became a living soul, which now the, for the first time, Adam actually became self-conscious. He became aware. This is where awareness came to him. Consciousness came to Adam. Now, in the soul, there's three different compartments of the soul. There is, first of all, the mind. The mind. The mind is, is not your brain. The, the, the mind is the, the decision-making faculty. The mind is where you process thoughts. And that's why the Word of the Lord now says to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. He says we are transformed by what? The renewing of our what? Mind, not our brain and not our spirit. We're renewed. We, we are transformed by the renewing of our what? Mind, which is the faculty of our thought processes. Mm -hmm. Every thought has a frequency attached to it that can be measured. 
That's something right there. Mm -hmm. they, can, they can measure, you go to a medical thing, they can measure thoughts, brain waves. Right? Mm -hmm. It can measure people that are having dreams. Right? Yeah. It can, that can be measured. Because there's an energy that's released from that. There's a, there's a magnetic field that's released from that. Alright? Now, in the soul is the mind. There is the will. The will, the volition. That is where the decision making, that is where you will yourself to do something. And thirdly is your emotions. It's also the seat of your personality. Your personality is an expression of the soul. That's why you like certain things. Your tastes, your preferences. You like vanilla or you like chocolate. You like Coke or Dr. Pepper. Okay? That's part of your will. Now, what happened was, all of that was in the soul. When sin entered in, not only did it disconnect us from God, but our soul picked up a virus. <laughs> the soul that sinneth shall die. Mm -hmm. Now, when sin entered in, not only was our spirit disconnected from God, separated from God, but now our mind where we could not receive the thoughts of God any longer. It says that they became corrupt in their imaginations, running after futile things. That's why it says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we fail. We fail. Adam, if we understood the capacity that Adam functioned in as a thinking, creative uh, individual, his physical strength and stature was amazing. The, the capacity that he had to do. Now, so our mind was affected where now the Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. The mind is deceitful. Who can know it? It's deceitful. The mind is deceitful. The heart is deceitful. It will deceive even the individual. Not only that, our passions and our desires got corrupted. Where we started desiring the things after the flesh. We start desiring the things after the carnal nature. Our emotions were affected. So now it is not only, what it, it just totally, the soul got messed up. Now when sin entered in, it affected you, body, soul, and spirit. Sin entered in to where our sickness and disease can attack your body. The outward man perishes, yet the inner man is renewed day by day. Amen. We can come up under bondages of addictions. When sin entered in, Adam and Eve never had a relationship conflict until they fell. Mm -hmm. when, when sin entered in, conflict between relationships, husband and wife, brother and sister, entered in. It was, they fell so far that the very next generation of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, where one brother killed another brother, he murdered him. That's how far they fell. Now, it didn't just affect your body, but it also affected everything else in your life. That now the curse came in and poverty and lack entered in as a result of sin. Adam was never in lack. Never in lack at all. His, the only thing Adam had to do was manage the harvest. I began to see, if you understood how big the garden was, if you were to take those four rivers that were, that were his parameters, and if you understood how much he had to work and to cultivate that land, that, it wasn't a garden like somebody's backyard. We're talking about a massive, massive square miles of this thing. Mm -hmm. and, God, and he never broke a sweat. All he did was manage his increase. Yeah. 
Amen. Then when sin and then, now God said, by the sweat of your brow, you're going to have to labor. By the sweat of your brow, you're going to have to make ends meet. Now you're going to be having to work two jobs. Now you're going to always have to struggle to make ends meet. Now the first thing that Jesus comes to do is when the blood hit the ground, he broke the curse Amen. and redeemed Amen. us from poverty. Amen. Now, then why aren't we experiencing it? Right? Well, the Bible says in patience possess ye your souls. Our bodies are waiting for the redemption when we get a second body. Your, your spirit was instantly changed and transformed, but your soul is progressively being changed. It's progressive. You have to take it, possess, in patience, possess your soul. Now, what God began to reveal to me, I'm doing a little bit of review, is he said that he wishes that you would prosper even as your soul does prosper. That means your finances is actually connected to the health of your soul. Come on. I can tell the healthiness of your soul by looking at the state of your finances. And God will not release <laughs> finances to an individual that has a sick soul. Mm -hmm. God will not release wealth to an individual whose soul is not healthy. Wow. He said, I want your soul and your finances at the same level of healthiness. And the problem is, is we're trying to get resources externally without first healing our damaged soul. That's right. That's right. We're looking to, for it to happen externally and we're not dealing with our soul. That's right. We go all the wealth seminars, conferences you want to and if you never deal with your soul God will never release the resources. Right. The reason is, is because if God was to release the resources to you, you've got to realize, in your soul is also your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And if your soul is wounded, and if your soul has been hurt through relationships, if your soul has been damaged by things that have happened in your life, if your soul has had offense in it, do you understand that the enemy cannot touch your spirit? So the only way that he can get to you is through your soul. So he sends people to you to wound you. He sends people to you to hurt you. Why? So you'll get offended. He can't get to your spirit. So he'll lock you up in your soul. So if your soul is wounded and you've experienced hurt and rejection and emotional trauma and you've never got up over it, you will never be able to advance in life.